And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Quartermaster General. This is from Greggling Games and it says it's a fast-paced World War II strategy game. Well, there are many World War II strategy games out there. I wouldn't say that all of them are fast-paced, um, so I was very interested to try this one out. I, I missed a word in the title when I first read this, Quartermaster General. See, if it was just general, it would be about fighting. This game does have fighting in it, but it's more about the Quartermaster part. Let me explain. The number of players in the game can go up to, to six players, um, and if you have less than that, then you divvy up the countries accordingly. Each player is going to get a deck, and these decks are very different for the different players. They're also going to get uh, a pile of their pieces of their color, and the pieces that you have are also differentiated in the amount that you have. There's two types of pieces, a land unit and a sea unit in your color. Each player starts with one land unit in their home area and then a score piece for both is placed over here. What you're trying to do is have the most score after 20 rounds and when at the end of your turn you're going to score for each of the starred areas on the board. And you can see there's various starred areas on the board. If you are the only person to have a unit in that, that uh, spot you'll get two victory points and if you have one where you're sharing it with somebody else, uh, which would be on your same team. So let's say that Ukraine both had a German and an Italian unit in it, then they would get one point on their turn. And so you'll keep track, all the allies, the United Kingdom, Moscow, and the USA are on one side, and Italy, Japan, and Germany are on the other side. On a player's turn, they play a card, uh, or discard one if they don't wish to play any cards. Then they have to check to see if they have support. That's the whole point of this game. So let's say it was the Italians' turn, and they went like this. They don't have, they have support, because this unit is in Ukraine, this one's in Italy, and both those are support centers. In fact, there's a few cards that will bring others, a couple support centers on the board. If I had a unit in Kazakhstan, and they were not adjacent to any other unit who was in a support area, then they would have to be removed from the board. Fleets have to be next to one of your land units and be able to trace it back to one of the support centers. So first you play a card, then you check your support, then you will score victory points, then you can discard as many cards as you want and draw back up to seven. Now discarding is a dangerous thing. Each player has different uh, amount of cards. The US has the most cards. Italy has the least cards. And if you ever run out of cards and you're supposed to discard cards or draw them, your team will lose points. So you have to be very cautious on that. Remember there's 20 turns in the game. So you can essentially, you're gonna play 20 cards. Now the different cards that players are going to be playing are Build Army. That's very simple. You can build an army adjacent to any other spot where you already have an army in a supply center. Or on the board, I'm sorry. You can build one on the board as long as they have lines of supplies. Build Navy, same thing, except they would have to be next to one of your land units. Land Battle. If I have a land unit next to a land unit of another army, let's say um, Italy, I can just discard the Russian one there. Sea battle, same thing, except it's in the sea. Events, all sorts of things can be on event cards. For example, this one, even though it's an Italian card, lets me recruit an available German army in North Africa and an available German navy in the Mediterranean. So I get to put out German stuff with that card. So I put one of these here and one of these here. Now hopefully, on the German turn, they will be able to hook those up to supply zones. And you'll notice that there's some straits that you can go through. You can go through the Mediterranean to the Bay of Bengal, for example, but if someone controls the Middle East, they can stop you from doing that. Status cards are cards that you play in front of you and they basically give you a special ability for the rest of the game. This is anti-communist. During the victory step of your turn, you get a victory point if either Russia or Ukraine is occupied by the Italian army. So this can give you an extra point every turn. Response cards are played face down in front of you. 
and you can play them and reveal them in the future if the prerequisite happens. For example, this one here, Monte Cassino, Cassino says, use any time, do not remove a German army in Italy this turn. So let's say there was a German army in Italy, it was about to be removed for some reason, I can flip, flip this card and say, no it's not. Economic warfare attacks your opponent's decks. This one makes the UK discard the top card of their draw deck and then Italy gets a victory point. And the status cards, the response cards, the economic warfare cards are all different. For example, this one here. German and Italy must each choose to either discard the top two cards of their draw deck or remove a navy in the Mediterranean. Um, this one, this response I can use any time. Choose a supplied United States or UK Navy adjacent to a supplied UK Army. Do not remove that Navy this turn. So you're going to have to figure out your deck because you need to know the number of cards in your deck. But the game will progress for 20 turns, which is kept track over here. And after 20 turns, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, if one side gets to 400 points, and I, I'm still not sure that's even possible, um, then they will win the game. Or if a player has armies in two of their opponent's home spaces. Now you can get, if you get an army in your opponent's home space, they skip the victory point on their turn. So that's a way to get ahead on victory points for sure. Anyway, that's how you play. See, I mentioned that the quartermaster was important because this game is all about logistics. See, if you get into, if you're looking for a game like, oh, ha, 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 crush you, beat you, that's not really the way this game works. This game is about um, putting the pieces down and controlling those lines of supply. Now, lines of supply is nothing new. It's in many games, except in this one, it's the focal point. I'm not so sure I'm as keen on that. I don't mind lines of supply. It's a great, it's a great thing. It's very thematic. But this, sometimes in this game, you can get caught up in the, that's all you're thinking about. But again, I guess that's where the quartermaster general part comes from. Does this game do something different that other World War II games don't? I think so. There certainly is a uniqueness to the decks. I like the, the card design. I like the, the play is very simple. You play one thing in your turn. Not real big fan of these wooden pieces, these tanks. Don't look, the, you're, if you like look at them and squint a bit, oh, that's a tank. Um, and the colors don't necessarily match yeah, I, I, I kept forgetting all the time that Italy was purple. Why are they purple? Just because. But anyhow, that, that's not a big deal. The board looks good, but the, the design in the cards is easy. You know, land battle. I mean, you can read that from across the room, practically. Uh, as I said in the overview, you really do need to know your deck. For example, Italy's deck has four build armies. At the beginning of the game, you discard a couple cards, and if you discard a build army, you could legitimately end up halfway through with nothing to do on Italy's turn. You can't build armies, so therefore you can't go around and attack stuff with them. But attacking in this game isn't really attacking. It still feels like a logistical thing. I am making you lose an army in that area. And the game's greatest asset can also be a weakness, in a sense that in this game, you play one card in your turn. Boom, 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 boom. And that's easy. The thing is, I make you remove a unit from your area. Next turn, I'm gonna to try to move in there. But before that happens, you move in there. And it's like, ah, I like to do, be able, I, sometimes I felt like I was never able to do something. Status cards are really cool, but sometimes human will have six in front of them. And you're like, oh, okay, what do all your status cards do again? And there are cards that discard status cards, but there's not many of them. The sides are certainly unbalanced, and I don't have a problem with that. Um, I mean, the different, as long as the teams are balanced. You know, I don't care if Italy's weaker, as long as Germany has something to do on their turn, you know, as long as they're more powerful. But there's a few problems I have. I mentioned a couple of them already, but one is the game is a little fiddly for my take. Moving the victory score after every person's turn gets so annoying. Okay, I score. I, I mean, I play a card, boom, boom, now score. Uh, four points, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I put, score, one, two, three, four. And you're moving those markers around and you will likely forget to move them at some point. Because the game plays so fast and then stopping and moving those things around a track, it just, I don't know, I wish there was a better way to do it. Uh, other than that though, the game is fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna diss the game, I'm not saying it's a bad game. It's certainly not one for me. I like a little bit more excitement in battles and this just move and play a card and take out a unit is not as interesting for me. The game is not that long, although because you're fiddling with the score thing and the round marker can feel a little longer than I, than I think it should be. And I'm not sure that it's great with a full complement of six players because playing like Italy and is just not as exciting as playing the United States. It seems like they have a lot more to do. Anyhow. 
Interesting though, something different in the genre. I think some people will get a kick out of it. Some of those I played with did enjoy the logistical maneuvering of it. I was looking for a little bit more warfare, uh, but at the same time, I can see some of the cool ideas in this game. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Quartermaster General. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.